Yeah, so we're, what we're going to do today is go through like who we are, what we do, how we've grown. Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about how we get clients, uh, spend a bit of time on our process, uh, what we've learned along the way, and then I'm hopefully going to give you some tips and tools that you can take away and do some stuff with today. So yeah, who am I? Um, I'm an English sounding Scottish guy. I'm actually mother and father are born in Scotland. So I'm very proud of that, I'll just let you know. Um, RF veteran turned six year SEO. Um, three years thinking I was God when I got into SEO, thinking I could do it all. Uh, make content, hope that links will come. Doesn't quite work like that. And then I met Big Craig. Um, and that was really like quite a big change point for me in my career and uh, to get us where we are today with the agency. Uh, so I'm Luke, I've been in the industry 15 years now, very long in the salesman. Um, I'm basically normally the guy in the background that doesn't do anything. Um, you know, my life is sitting around in an office, <laughs> cruising the web, so it's a very nice life. <laughs> um, so we were founded in actually 2014, we've been going, coming up five years. Um, we're up to 21 team members now, and we've built our business uh, across SMEs, which is common to a second. Um, well, we've got 206 client retainers now, uh, and we're a very banterous lot. You know, we enjoy work, we have a good time, and um, some people like it, some people don't. If they don't like it, they don't pass. Um, <laughs> so our game plan, our, our strategy has been built upon uh, sort of pyramids, and pyramids normally get bad press, but without a pyramid, what we're trying to do is build out a really, really strong base of SMEs. What this does is provide us with a strong financial platform to be able to grow the company up. I've met numbers of people working in other agencies that have built very, very thin platforms, and when one client doesn't pay or they lose a client or something happens, all of a sudden they've got sleepless nights about not being able to pay wages and so on and so forth. For us, what we want to be able to do is make sure what we're doing is sustainable. So we're trying to build out a really strong SME background and sort of make sure this platform is really, really sort of strong for the business. It enables us then to start challenging going up after large and large companies. We've really got to start building up to the next stage now where we've got some large levels and we're starting to get into the blue chip area now. But if we lose a client, it doesn't matter because we've got a strong base. It doesn't put us under financial pressure and means that we're still able to provide a return for our customers as well. So why? Well, basically, I'm sure you're aware, there's 5.7 million businesses in the UK. 99.9% of these are SMEs. Now, this is our target market. If they employ 60% of all workers in the UK, and they earn 52% of all UK turnover. So it's the biggest market there is. Um, our average clients spend between 250 and 5,000 pounds a month. So some good retainers in there and we're starting to reach into the next level of the 10 to 12,000 pounds a month clients now. Again, this provides us a really strong financial base to be able to build the company over the long term and create our sort of own internal testing platform. We're able to see the effects of the algorithm changes on our own clients and determine what influence those changes. So what do we do? We basically do everything, and I know that Craig was quite dismissive of agency life, but you know, what we do, we do SEO, AdWords, blah, 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 the full range. But it enables us to keep everything in-house, it enables us to keep the client happy. A client doesn't have to go somewhere else to go and get email marketing or go somewhere else to get web design. That keeps the ownership with us and makes sure that they're a long-term client of ours. As long as we're providing them with an ROI, then they'll stay with us. And that really, really works for our business model. So yeah. how we grow? Um, Tom's going to talk to you about this now because I've just... Yeah, so a um, little bit about how we've grown. I won't bore you with too much, um, but what we've been able to do is employ digital marketing apprentices. Um, you know, we get them for about 500, 600 pound a month and they are literally a full-time employee. And the best thing about them is that they come in fresh. Um, they're always hungry, very cheap, um, employing like SEO consultants, uh, you know, they cost quite a lot. They usually got bad habits or they've listened to the wrong type of advice and you've got to try and re-advise them. Um, and it's just a pain in the ass, to be honest. So we always like to employ people that are hungry, fresh, they really want to learn um, and it, it can sort of like accelerate their learning growth. Um, standard operating procedures, so important. They've allowed us to grow, scale, um, and outsource a lot of our tasks, which has made us, which is the reason why we're able to service so many clients and on, on so many different projects. 
um, developers. We brought the developers in house so that we could quickly make changes because a lot of the time, like developers will say, oh, you've got to charge out a 30 minute block and it's like 75 quid just to change a small bit of code or whatever it might be. Um, and what we also do is constantly blog for freshness um, to tick that box with the Google algo. But it's meant that our site is very, very healthy. Google's looking at it, and because we've got constant, we're constantly increasing the keyword count and things like that. Um, we're driving a lot of traffic to the website. Um, we've seen massive growth really for what we are is a small agency. Um, and what this is doing, like people are. Because of, we mentioned before about the, well, I'm going to mention in a moment, I think, about the client um, referrals and things. Um, people that are reading our blog, um, you know, that indirectly affects the type of inquiries that we're getting, especially on a local basis. So, yeah, so how we actually get clients, cold calling. Um, it's a numbers game. We've got guys smashing out like 200, 300 calls a day. Um, and it's, uh, you know, if we think about it, it's about 10 to 15% conversion rate on that side of things to warm the leader. Um, I'll just add now as well, like on some of the like marketing managers that are working um, with, with the cold call side of things, um, what we're doing is using a, a tool called Linked Helper um, and we're, we're warming that lead up by visiting their profile before we actually call them a lot of the time. Um, we're also running paid search as well. Um, we added live chat to our website. That's had a huge effect on the conversions and things. Um, it's quite a fun tool as well because some of the shit that we get through is unbelievable. And um, referrals and recommendations are probably like 75% of, of how we've been able to grow this side of the business. Um, but I'm going to take you through like what we're actually doing, the process and stuff that we're doing at the moment. So the business development manager will consult the SEO to qualify the spend needed to rank. Typically, how many links do we actually need to rank them for these keywords that we're targeting? Um, sales, will, sales will send a load of information to us and then that will get handed over to the SEO team leader. And then the SEO exec schedules a welcome call within 24 hours. Um, and I'll just emphasize that like communication has been a massive part of why I've been able to grow so quickly as well. Um, just that one little phone call right at the beginning really sets the campaign up to be um, good for them to have a good feeling about it because a lot of people, they've been burnt by other SEO agencies or they'll just, yeah, they've basically been burned and it really helps them. So budgets is a massive problem um, or a massive opportunity. It depends which way you want to look at it. Like Craig will throw clients in the bin that only want to spend like 250, 300 quid. But you know, you can still make those budgets work for you. They can still be profitable. Um, we charge our time out at about 100 pounds an hour. And we've only recently increased that from 75 pounds. You know, price of, price of cost goes up. But what we have to do with that budget is do what works quickly. Um, and that's what I want to try and like drum home to you guys today give you some tips on like the sort of stuff that's really going to help. But um, work for the spend, less than 500 pounds, we're smashing them through a, um, a standard month one process. 500 to 1,000 pounds, is, um, we're fixing like a lot of in-depth audit stuff as well. You know, it might be a bit of a loss leader right at the beginning for us, but if the opportunity is there and we can see that we're able to grow them, get them ranking for these keywords that are going to convert, it's a big opportunity for us. And anyone spending a thousand pounds and above, we're doing custom content marketing and outreach campaigns as well, instead of just buying links, which is, you know, I'll go through that in a little bit as well. Um, and we always say like that everyone gets one piece of content minimum. Um, I think that, you know, if you're doing SEO campaign, you're not doing content, then um, that'd be a bit ridiculous. Um, our SEO team process, we have a central whip, like a work in progress sheet that we all work from. And there's no, there's no one point of contact usually. Um, we have like an SEO inbox, we have an SEO telephone number, clients can just call in and just speak to whoever they like at the time. Um, some of our larger clients, like we've got a few that are spending 5k plus, they obviously want that dedicated account manager, so that's fine. On that welcome call that we, that we have with them, we're confirming all the name and address and phone details, confirming the seed keywords. It's good to get an idea of what they actually want to rank for before we tell them if they're not the right keywords that we want to be going after. Um, we also get them to set up the socials. That socials, the social media side of things is huge for the, uh, for the local algorithm, um, huge for trust signals. All of us local successful sites have active social medias. Um, and a little tool here that we use is followlike.net and it provides organic growth for these social media um, platforms and channels and things. Um, you just literally plug your site into there. And the way it works is that 
like you, you load it up with a tenner um, and load, you get you get a hundred coins or whatever, and people can come and like earn those coins off you by maybe liking your page or following you on Instagram or retweeting something, whatever it might be. Um, and we also get access to the Google My Business because obviously that's very important. Google are massively pushing that at the moment in local side of things. So the month one stuff. What we're doing is we're getting the analytics set up, um, search console as well, and a tool called Agency Analytics is our tracking tool. Um, it's grown massively over the last few years. Um, it's, it's next to none in my opinion. Um, and a lot of this stuff is powered by the SEMrush API as well within that. Um, we also get the events conversion and e-com tracking set up because we want to make sure that we're actually what we're doing is successful. Um, and then we're, we're also spending a lot of time on the keyword research and the mapping. But you know, the budgets always limit the depth of what we can go to with this. Um, small budgets, we have to like just optimize on the fly. We're not going to create spreadsheets. We're not going to confirm keywords and stuff like this. We just want to work on the pages or create new pages that are actually going to like uh, rank for these keywords and stuff. And then anyone that's spending a grand and above, we are going a bit more in depth with the keyword side of things. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at the, um, Lucas mentioned about the search intent before, I know maybe it was Steve and I, about the search intent. Um, we're categorizing keywords using a process called ADA, which is attend, uh, awareness, intention, desire, and action. Um, and you can also do it with, uh, you might have heard like transactional, informational, navigational type of keywords and things like that. Um, some of the tools that we're using at the time to do the keyword research, Ahrefs, Keywords Everywhere, which is a Google Chrome plugin. Uh, it gives you the search volumes actually on the page. It's brilliant on the search results. Answer the Public is another great one. Storybase, uh, Google Suggest in the search results, related searches, and Content Gap Analysis in Ahrefs as well, which is really good for, for finding opportunities and keywords. And like just reiterate about the budget side of things. Um, you, you know, the keyword research, whilst it's going to grow the website, for smaller sites that are spending like 250 pounds, 300 pounds or whatever, it's not a good use of their budget spending hours on this keyword research side of things. So the technical audit. So again, with budgets in mind, we have to, we have to do what works and really go after, fix the things that are actually going to cause like quite a big influence on the, how the site performs. Um, we use agency analytics audits, which is powered by the SEMrush audits. These audits have improved so much over the last few years. Also, Screaming Frog as well, because it's good to have the manual side of things going. Uh, Screaming Frog, if nobody knows about it, it's so cheap, but it gives you all the raw data that you can use. We use spreadsheets to track all the fixes, especially if we're having to, especially if we're having to, um, uh, like give the give the uh, tools or give the fixes out to an external developer. It's really good to like categorize it all through the spreadsheets, and yeah, get optimizing the easy stuff inside of the technical audit because we're always restrained by the budget side of things. And these are the things that we focus on pretty much. Like obviously, like anyone that spends a good amount of budget, you can do more. You can you can like on these much larger sites, you can fix a lot more of the complex issues. But for us, we're just looking at the titles, making sure the keyword's right at the beginning of the title, and then we've got some sort of LSI in there as well. Um, within the URL, you want the keyword in the URL. Um, you want the keyword in your H tag as well for the RSOS. Anyone that doesn't know that, it's about reverse sync or swim. Um, it's really good with the backlink side of things as well. But if you, to build up that relevancy, you want to have your keyword in the title, the URL, the H1, and within the content. Um, schema, sch review schema for local is massive. Like um, you saw the star ratings on the search results before. Um, that has a drastic effect on click-through rate, especially for guys that are ranking in seventh or eighth. You'll typically get the click over the top three positions. Um, anyone on WordPress, there is literally a plugin that you just, uh, a small plugin doesn't cause any bloat. You stick it in, activate it. And for any sort of review page, if you've got Google My Business Reviews on there, you can tie it into a page that you want to rank for um, or the, whatever you're optimizing. And uh, the, the star ratings will appear in the search results in no time. Um, we wanted to make sure that the, the site actually has a blog. Like a lot of the time, like these guys will come to us and they, they won't even have any type of blog. So we wanted to make sure that's in there, check how it's configured. Internal linking, like uh, it's surprising like how much that actually gets neglected. 
Um, but you need, site, you need Google to be able to discover these pages. So on small sites, we're literally just smashing links to each and every page from the blog, internally linking all of the page, even if it's not really a, a flat site structure. You know, we might do like on, on sites that we're spending, the, the budgets are like 2K plus, and we, we, we would maybe work towards like a silo type of structure. Um, and with the internal linking side of things on larger budgets, we're using a, pay, um, a tool called Sitebulb, which is really good for mapping that out. And, and page speed as well, obviously gonna be, um, just with regards to the page speed side of things, um, a few tools have been mentioned today already. Um, GT metrics, make sure that when you're running your, you can literally download the page speed fixes from GT metrics, go and work on all those yourself. We've done testing with Lighthouse as well. The, the three that you need to focus on is time to first paint, um, time to interactivity, which was mentioned earlier, and first contemptful paint as well. Focus on those three, those two things to optimize above anything else and your site will do much better. And remember budgets, more budget, more flex. Um, you know, other things that we could do, all budget dependent, it's not much different really. We can just do more content, more outreach, get more links. And the decisions, like internally, we make a decision on, we have, a, we have an SEO team meeting once a month, we spend a few hours in the morning, we look at each client and think, what is gonna yield the best result for this guy this month? What keyword might not be performing so well? You know, we make a decision around that, like, right, well, they need some links, or we need to work on some more audit side of things, the site isn't really responding to what we're doing. Whatever that might be, each month we'll make that decision. Backlink audit, so, we're accumulating all of the backlinks from Search Console, AHS, SEM Rush, and Majestic. Um, I think out of all of those, a lot of people forget to, that Search Console shows you links and the, the amount of sites that, I've, that we've worked on where the Search Console links are so much different from what AHS and SEMrush and Majestic are reporting is insane. So don't neglect that. Anchor text over optimization is real. Um, there was a post put out on Facebook, I don't know, maybe about a month ago, and it was like, anchor text is bullshit. Um, and that really frustrated me because constantly we're seeing, we're seeing we're inheriting sites where the, over, the anchor text is completely over optimized. And just by maybe removing one link or requesting an anchor to be changed, we're seeing sites ping back to where they actually should be, which is maybe on page one or page two, depending on how much link strength they have. Um, disavow works even without a penalty. So last week I was in Birmingham and someone said, um, don't disavow if you haven't got a manual penalty or something along those lines, um, because you're sort of like flagging yourself up to be doing, doing stuff that you shouldn't be to Google. Um, it's bullshit. Just make sure that you do your disavows and keep on top of that. We've got it a part of our monthly process um, because you know um, it's nice to have a natural profile. You don't want a completely clean profile. Like some sites, you are gonna acquire shit links from time and time again, but you wanna make sure that you're doing your disavows because negative SEO is still, there's still a lot of people doing that. We get it all the time. And citation alignment as well. So this is ongoing every month. Um, citation alignment is so important. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't really need to say much more than that. You have to make sure whatever your name, address, phone number is on Google My Business, make sure that your citations match that completely. Like if you've got the word road, if you're on like, I don't know, uh, Buchanan Street or whatever, and in your Google My Business it's ST instead of street, just make sure your citations match that stuff. Um, and you know, ongoing, what we're wanting to do is get some quick and easy links. Like we're always limited by budget. So we have to do what works and what works quickly. Um, citations, when we're, we're auditing, you can't really see it too well, though. I think if you can see it on that screen better. But for our citations, we're using Citations Builder. These guys are exceptional at creating unique descriptions on the citations as well. Um, and that's allowing them to stay indexed. Um, for, for people that are really tight on their budgets and side of things, we use another service called Local Citation Services. You get 80 citations for $20. The only problem is, is that they're not, they're, they're, they're citation links, um, but some of the sites are really difficult to get indexed on. Um, and because they, they don't spin or they don't create unique descriptions, so you have to manually go through all of those and 
For the differences in cost, I'd just recommend that you would use Citations Builder, but that's a tool that you could use as well, local citations if you want. Another one that we do is buy a relevant domain to 301. We do this straight away because it takes about three months for a domain that you've 301 to kick in, um, but it's a good way of, and it has to, has to be relevant. Um, just wanted to point that out. I use Spamzilla. Um, God, I can't even see what I've added here. Uh, Register Compass and Hammerhead domains as well. Build your GMB out. So make sure that you geotag 10 or more of your images. Um, you need to have unique description on there. Don't just cut and paste the description from your About Me page. Make sure it's an actual unique description. Google My Business is pushing their GMB sites. You might have seen it in the back end of the platform. You can create a Google My Business site. It's like whatever your URL might be, .businesssite.com, I think. Make sure you've got that. I think that's one for the future, to future-proof you. If you've got your GMB site indexed straight away, you know, I think that's gonna be really good for the future. Um, there's another tool here called massoptimizer.com that helps you geotag your images. It's got some other cool features as well. Um, we're repairing broken backlinks as well, um, right at the beginning. Um, you'll be surprised how many backlinks in your profiles are probably going to dead pages that you haven't even noticed. And it's a really easy way to reclaim some juice um, and, and you know, fix those 404s and things like that. And index your links, like this is just so important. I mean, I don't know how many times people have come to us and you know, they're complaining, not ranking, they're buying all these citations and I'm looking through these sites and just like, you haven't even got 20% of them indexed. So if Google does can't see them, you're not gonna get any benefit from them. I use Index Inject and Elite Link Indexer to do that. So month two onwards, content, links, add at least one piece of content, 500 word blog, share it on your socials, get traffic to it. Use followlike.net for traffic exchange. There's all types of traffic exchange. You can literally, so I use, um, we, we've got this thing called micro workers and people will literally work for like 2p, 4p. So if I wanted to get like 100 visitors to my blog piece, um, I could literally load it in here and pay someone a penny to go and visit that page, spend a bit of time on it. Um, you can choose which countries they come from as well. Um, obviously like for all our UK clients, we're just using UK traffic. And these people are, you know, these, these people out there just doing this from the comfort of their own homes. It's right there for us. Press releases is a good way to build links. Nick's Lee is a guy that I'd recommend from Legit. He, I, think, I think his baseline is like $90 for a press release, but you're getting like 500 links. And if you, re, if you put them all through Index Inject um, and get those all indexed, it's, it's gonna help one with your anchor text optimization and two for your backlink profile as well. IFTTT. So for anyone that doesn't know what that is, it's, it stands for if this, then that. Um, it doesn't get talked about so much very more, but we find it's still really powerful on a local level. We got one of these, um, we use it to set up like a syndication network. So every time that some, a blog gets published on our site, it goes out to all of these major sites without us having to even lift a finger. Um, and I've got a guy here, I'll give you these slides at the end if you want to use any of these people, but this guy's really cheap. He's like $70 and he sets up like all these different rings. That's definitely an area that you want to be looking at because um, not many people are doing it, but it's working really well. PBNs, so we all love PBNs, I hope, but um, you've got to test services yourself, or you could just build them up. I mean, I, I was gonna recommend a guy that will set up a PBN for you for nine bucks, but I didn't bother doing that because you can just go out and uh, test services yourself, very hit and miss. Um, continuing on, so buying links, you've got to be careful when you buy links. Like, I've used every bloody service you can imagine. And um, Gary, who's going to be talking after me, he's buying the links and he's not in here because he's my mate and I'm talking after me. He's in here because he's one of the only guys that have actually given me a good service. They get him on, if he, if he says he's going to put a link on a DR20 site, I'm getting DR30s back. It's a brilliant service um, and I use it quite a lot. And bigguestposting.com is a database of over 50,000 sites that you can go and get guest posts on. Now obviously there's gonna be a lot of shit in there, but you can actually get some decent links from there for really relatively good costs as well. I know a lot of the vendors that are providing you guys backlinks that so you're paying $150, $200 for, are buying them off here for like 20 bucks. So just go and check it out. Um, another thing that we're doing to drive traffic is using Reddit and Quora Q&A. 
Um, we can go on there and we can create some content and stuff like this. Um, but getting the upvotes is what you really want to do. That's what's going to help you with your rankings. And um, using this micro task that I've mentioned before, you can use followlike.net. Um, and what they'll do is they'll just go and upvote your post and whatever like that and stuff like this. Um, and still your competitors battling. It's like that is just a constant thing that we're always doing. Um, we use a tool called Click Hunter to do that with Majestic. Ahrefs have got a backlink gap analysis tool as well. Um, you know, these are really easy ways to like build a huge list of links that you can just go out and contact these sites and say, you know, do whatever you want, but can I get a link? <laughs> Larger budgets, content marketing has to come into play. We can't just sit there and wait for our content just to like na our sites to naturally acquire links. Um, so what we're doing is a typical post, so I don't know um, how well educated this is, but we've got a site um, that's a wine investment type site, and what they've got on their site is a massive guide in how to, how to invest in wine. Um, and so what we're doing is, straight away, we've then got a linkable asset right there, a great content piece that we can go and pitch out to people, and it will naturally acquire links, but we can do it with a bit of a push um, using like an outreach process. So we can prospect, we can find prospects with search operators, but we use Scrapebox. Um, we use MailShake to do all the emails and follow-ups as well, and it just results in links, links, links constantly. Um, if, you, if you can't identify a good piece of content on your site, then just you've got to create, you've got to be creative inside of things. I mean, what we do in the office quite often is we'll grab everyone, get them into the training room, and we'll just like fire ideas at each other about what type, types of content people might want to see. Thinking about like, right, what, what user personas are we actually uh, marketing to, and what content might they want to see. And a lot of the time, these content pieces take like five, 10 minutes to create, but they, uh, they attract like bloggers and whoever it might be that we're prospecting to. Um, this is a way of like acquiring and generating links for no cost at all if your content is spot on. So, um, what we've learned along the way, budgets don't go far at all, um, especially if you're trying to work to a hundred pounds a month budget, hundred pounds an hour budget like we are, we have to squeeze out everything we can with that and we've got to do the stuff that works. Like you don't want to sit there for hours thinking of blog titles, it's ridiculous. Just get on and just start getting the links, getting the content going. Um, bringing the developers in-house was a massive turning point for us. It stopped the bottleneck in our business with regards to waiting for audit fixes and things. Yield quicker results if I've got someone there that's gonna do this change for me, rather than waiting three or four days and paying out development blocks or whatever it might be. There's no room for sentiment. Um, we've had a few staff in the past that have worked really hard and things like that. But unfortunately, you've got you've to really be hungry for this and that, that, that shines through in the quality of the work that you're doing. It doesn't matter how hard you work, you've got to work smarter. And you've got to keep hold of your good staff and do all you can to do that because they're very hard and expensive to replace. Get rid of the crap ones and quit because they're a massive time drain and poison spreads which we've uh, had to battle because we, in our agency what we try and do is create a very like relaxed and fun environment for people to work in. But you know, small businesses, if you've got um, a member of staff that's maybe like, you know, a bit of unhappy about things and then they're talking to your other staff members when the managers are not there, like that shit, you need to get that shit out of your business straight away in anything that you do. Accountability, people in a small business environment like ours, you've got to be accountable for your actions. Like we've had people, we, we, we had this content marketing girl and she was great in that and she was in charge of like the content side of things and doing the blogs and our client work and stuff like this. And then she went and published a blog on this client's site and the picture, so they, they do like, um, like paper trimmers and stuff like that and the picture that she'd used was a, was a, a competitor's image and obviously the client went fucking ape shit. Anyway, shit rolls downhill, so I gave her a load of shit and she fucking got up and just walked out. And the thing is with that is that she's not being accountable for her actions. She's not really taking care and that's what you want to make sure that you're doing. Another one is communication is absolutely vital. Make sure that you're, that you're there to answer any questions. Obviously, some clients are going to be a time drain. Like, I think it's like 80% uh, of the time, 20% of our clients will take up most of that time. So you just have to manage those expectations. 
Now, we try and drum home that the longer that you spend on the phone to us or emailing us, that's the less time that we've got doing the good stuff, like getting your site ranking. Um, and be careful of rogue staff doing stupid shit like GSA on your own site. Um, that's like a, that's just a training issue, I think, but you've got, you want to be careful of this. Like, it's all well having staff that are like hungry and they want to try things and like, yeah, just like, you know, go and, go and do this, go and do that, like test it out. Don't start GSA on our own fucking site trying to get that to rank with it. That's going to lead to a penalty. Anyone that doesn't know GSA, it's like a, it's like an automated link building tool. Um, don't do it on tier one, which I'll come into in a minute. And just some tips and tools for you to take away today. Um, do these things straight away. Go and send tier two G GSA links, your guest posts and citations. What it does, it helps keep them indexed, but it takes about three to four months to really yield any ranking results from our tests. Duplicate content still works in local. If you've got a guy like a plumber in Glasgow or whatever, and he wants to target all these different all these different uh, areas in Scotland, just duplicate the page and change the location. It still works, even though Google might tell you, nah, don't do duplicate content or whatever. Reviews don't move the needle, but they still get them for trust signals. There's a Google and Facebook review exchange group on uh, on Facebook. Um, it's for UK only. It's a really good way of Generating some nice reviews, even though they're te technically they're fake, at least they're coming from the UK. It makes these guys, this, it doesn't matter if it's fake or if it's real. If, if somebody's wanting to use someone's service, like hire a plumber, and they've got some nice reviews there about, yeah, this plumber's good, they're gonna pick up the phone and call them. So don't, don't sit there and think, oh yeah, these reviews, they're, they're fake though. Like, just get what, do what works and get the results for these guys. Communication is vitally important, which I've said already. Um, doesn't matter how good you are at SEO, clients will leave you if you're not communicating properly. Um, perception is truth until proven otherwise, which is very important. Call your clients every month to run through the report. I mean, you don't have to do this, but that's helped us keep a really high client retention rate over 12 months. Um, and you know, we always go to them with solutions to any problems. Like we're, if, if we've got a report that might not be the way we want it to be, we're always going to them with a plan of action. And, and you know, it just instills confidence in these clients. Um, another, uh, there's a guy here that sells domains. He's got a small PBN called Matt Chicot. Um I use him. I only promote people really that like, I trusted. Um, I'm not gonna give you guys like shit people who just don't make any sense. Um, and if you buy PBN links from anyone and you see ranking jobs, get them removed as soon as possible. Now, I know that could be a footprint for, oh yeah, you're, you know, if Google come along like a manual rater and they're looking at the site, they're like, wow, they're removing links straight away and things like that. The, 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 the ultimate thing is you won't rank if you have toxic PBNs pointing at your site. It will um, diminish the results. And send PBNs at your social properties and your IFTTT rings if you're gonna do that. Don't sweat the metrics. Like, you know, sometimes um, people get too focused on what the DR is or the TF is. Links with traffic is bullshit. Like, I, I hear that all the time. You wanna get links that have got like good, good traffic and stuff like this. It doesn't bloody matter. Just get the links, that's the most important thing. And focus on the stuff that works. Some of the tools that we use, Agency Analytics, we've got a promo code for 50% off if anyone wants to look at that. You can integrate all of your stuff into it, it's a really good one. Majestic, Ahrefs, Backlink Watch is a good one for discovering those um, really deep backlinks that might not show up in these other tools. Screaming Frog for your audits, Retortal for social media automation, Pandabot for traffic generation. Traffic Leaks is a really good way of getting, um, it's, it just lo loads of tips and ideas for getting traffic to your website. Um, SAPE, which I won't really recommend too high, but it works. Like we've done some tests, uh, putting SAPE directly at sites and they're ranking really well. I mean, obviously we might get, a, I can imagine over the course, if you just had SAPE as part of your strategy, you're probably gonna get a penalty. So I wouldn't say do it all the time. Um, Hunter.io for discovering email addresses. PBN Hunter.io for discovering people's PBNs. Article Forge for click of, click of a button articles. 500 word article, literally at a click of a button. Obviously it takes five, 10 minutes to sort out. You wanna be running it through Copyscape as well to make sure it's not plagiarized. Serp.net for a good place to manage all of your PBNs if it's PBNs that you're gonna to wanna to be using. Um, that's also good for um, uh, domain discovery as well, but although they're making some improvements to the tool at the minute. Uh, Media Mister, if you want to go, and, so like when we were saying before about setting up socials for your local clients, 
like um, don't medium is so you can go and buy like followers go and buy likes and stuff like this i mean it's going to a natural it's going to look unnatural to have a plumber who's got five thousand page likes on facebook so yeah, but it will look good if they've got maybe 500. Um, and Serpify as well is another traffic generation tool. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and uh, I'll give you all the slides at the end or whatever. And then you can follow Bright Design across all of our different social channels. Uh, hopefully that's giving you guys something to think about, take away. There we go.